Good morning, Devils fans. We finally won one. Uh, even though I did predict that this should have been a much easier game of our three from the Prospect Challenge weekend, uh, I did not know when I recorded the last video that we would not have Nemitz or Stillman playing in this one. Even with that, uh, we still should have been the favorites going in. So getting the 4-2 win with the Baby Devs over the Baby Bruins is good to see and what you want to see from our prospects. And I would say the two most notable uh, of the three guys I'm going to really talk about for this game are ones that should have stepped up given the level of competition we we're facing. So at forward, I would say our two big standouts were Clark, as he should have been, and Philman. Uh, I didn't have too many notes from this game because, to be honest, on the whole... It was fairly boring, uh, not the best hockey from either side, uh, but especially with no Nemec, uh, it wasn't, you know, the most entertaining of watches given that, you know, none of these guys are likely to sniff the NHL roster out, you know, still an outside chance for a couple of them uh, as far as maybe injury call-ups go. Uh, but still wanted to review the few notes that I did take on these guys. So I think Philman probably had his best play of the tournament in this game. Uh, there was a great read that he had at our offensive blue line uh, where the Bruins were attempting to dish the puck out into the neutral zone where he knocked it out midair and then cleanly uh, in one motion passed it to Clark who then beat their goalie clean with one of Clark's signature snipes to get us up uh, to start this game. Uh, I thought it was... Uh, a fantastic goal by them. Uh, finally got us on the board. And it's really what you want to see from these two, given the guys that were on the other side. A uh, bit of criticism on Clark on the offensive side, actually, uh, before I get into some defensive things he did well compared to last game. Uh, he came in, uh, was kind of streaking into the offensive zone and took a very, very low percentage shot from like the top of the circle. No screen, no you know, click pass over to him. I mean, this was just the most like straightforward save you could really make as a goalie. Uh, that's not really something you want to see be even attempted at the NHL level. You know, it might happen on occasion by guys that think they can beat a goalie clean. Clark is not that guy against NHL competition. Uh, so really it's just better shot selection there. Uh, but on the whole, I've actually really liked Clark's uh, shot in all of these games. It's really been the defensive side that I've had my criticisms for him. So I did want to give a couple shout outs for what he did well in this one. So he finally got a chance on the penalty kill. Uh, was very active on it. Highly, highly pressured whoever had the puck uh, within his zone and had a very active stick. Ended up breaking up uh, some of the plays uh, while they're on the PK and getting zone exits off of those as well. And that's really what you want to see from your forward on the PK. Uh, he also had a, I, I don't know if you want to call it a defensive blunder, but he ended up basically tackling his own defenseman that led to a breakaway against the other way. Thankfully, uh, the third name that I want to give a shout out here, and that was Mercer. Uh, he, I think, was actually really good. Um, probably our best goalie of this weekend. He had some really great plays. Now, he did flounder a bit, I think, well, especially when going side to side, but I don't know if that was him getting maybe in his own head a little bit. He said after talking with our goalie coach here uh, and working on things, one of the biggest notes was for him not to drop as much, to stay on his skates when going laterally, uh, and to you know wait for that very last second before dropping. So I think maybe he was overthinking that a bit, as it was clear sometimes when he was moving laterally that he was almost diving out while still trying to stay on his skates. Uh, and to cut down the angles, which was another note he said was given to him by the goalie coach. So uh, I think maybe once he works on that a bit more, it could actually look a lot better because the rest of his game actually looked really good. Uh, so I don't know if he'll end up getting any sort of AHL or uh, further contract for this season, but I could see him being a draft target heading into next year for us. So definitely great game by him. Uh, Clark had some up and downs, like I said offensively good and bad defensively good this game and then the one blunder but really you know that's not knowing the systems guys knowing their spots but still should maybe have the awareness to see the guy around you but hey guys knocking to each other in the nhl as well not gonna rip them apart on that one and then like i said uh Philman, i had one other note on uh he had some good skating into the ozone kind of created a lot of ice for himself and a give uh with a give and go uh situation very similar actually to the Dougie Ham Hamilton Brat overtime goal that we had saw during the regular season last year. Uh, and then he got a nice shot off of it. He did not convert on it, but still it's really more so the mechanics of the play and the goalie made a good save. So, you know, it's something you do like to say. That's really all my notes from the game. Like I said, um, our big, 
big guy that we really wanted to keep an eye out wasn't playing in this one. Um, you know, neither was Nemec. <laughs> Stillman joked. And so I uh, don't need to go too much further into this. Focused on the guys I wanted to focus on. So instead, wanted to give slight preview as tomorrow uh, we head into Vets uh, coming in for training camp. Today should be a full off day for the team. And then Vets report tomorrow. Um, looking at how things went last year. Uh, probably likely just going to get off ice stuff today, physicals, maybe a bit of media. Tomorrow, if it matches up with last year, will be a full team on ice skate. And then uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the teams will split into three squads. Again, this is assuming if they do it the same as last year, they could change it up. Um, we will get the... Uh, last year, they actually did not release full rosters at the day one. It wasn't until the on-ice practice that we actually got rosters. Uh, and then I don't think we even got the three group pairings until the first day of in-house scrimmages. So basically, the team split up into... Team A, Team B, Team C. It's a mixture of vets and rookies and prospects. And they just scrimmage in-house. So basically one team, you know, let's say Team A on Friday will practice. And then Team B and C will scrimmage each other Friday. And then it will rotate. So every team gets a couple scrimmages and every team uh, gets a practice. And then that leads right into preseason on Monday. That's how they ran it exactly last year. Uh, off ice, on ice practice, three days of scrimmages right into preseason. So I expect pretty much the same to come this year. Uh, don't want to go too much into that because, you know, we'll get a bit more information as it comes out. As I've already in these videos, end up saying one thing. An hour later, more information comes out. And I, you know, will end up being, you know, not guessing correctly. Uh, even though last game I did predict Mercer was in, didn't predict Nemec coming out. So that's how those things go. Really, the only other piece of Meteor news about the Devils that did come out uh, yesterday between my last recording was Lindy Ruff did give a good Q&A interview with NHL.com. Uh, I will link that here in the description. Again, channel isn't quite big enough to be a hyperlink, but just copy and paste that to check it out. Very quick, um, just a few handful of questions for him. The things that really stuck out to me the most was... Um, Talking about I, how Timo, uh, he is not worried at all about his scoring woes that we ran into, especially in the first round of the playoffs. Just said, you know, he probably played the best goalie in the league in Chesterkin, and he just really likes what he sees and the dynamic he's going to bring to the team next year. How he's very confident in Vanacek and Schmidt as our tandem. Uh, thinks Vanacek maybe was physically and mentally strained after a career-high 52-game season. Heading into playoffs, Schmidt thankfully came in and saved us a bit there, but thinks with a much more balanced goalie approach this year, both guys should be rested and ready to go come playoff times. High hopes for Luke, but isn't setting the ceiling too high. He's coming in replacing two veteran. Well, not two, but uh, replacing one, I guess, in that sense. And then also mentions Ball as the Graves replacement. Still says Ball has to earn that spot and position, but that is the assumption going into camp. Uh, Travis Green had a nice little blurb about him. Says this guy loves to talk about hockey literally nonstop. Uh, he is very much going to be focused on the offensive side of things. And basically every day from sunrise to sunset and afterwards uh, talks about and brings ideas about he already thinks we can do some things better on the offensive side. Wants to know the in and out of every player and what they bring and how we've been utilizing them. And just says, you know, when you bring in a head coach that was doing it for a number of years, they have a they are a very valuable asset uh, for a guy like Lindy. So definitely looking forward to that. And really the last bit of note was on Dawson Mercer uh, and how he likely will maybe flop and uh, back and forth between center and wing this year. So maybe we do see Halla back on Jack's wing or maybe Mercer will take some face-offs for Jack's, uh, Jack a couple times. We'll see, uh, but definitely says expect Mercer to get some center and wing play this year. Maybe he gets reunited with Holtz like they did at their prospect challenge where they looked really good together. So we'll see exactly how that ends up playing out. But yeah, that's really going to do it for this video. It should be an off day, I believe, entirely for the team and media as vets report tomorrow. And hopefully we get to finally see the boys uh, on some media pieces, interviews, get some nice sound bites and like before we actually see them on ice in the Devils jerseys come Thursday. So it's Tuesday. We head into hump day tomorrow. Work week is uh, already a bit crazy for me. Doctor's appointment for the little one as his six-month checkup is today. And yeah, uh, that will wrap it up. I will see everyone tomorrow morning, as always and forever. Let's go Devils.